Shalom. This week's Sejra is Sejra's Noah. Judaism is a religion that searches for meaning, especially in the most mundane areas. There are areas full of meaning and other areas lacking in significance. While the meaning is easy to find when it is there and we spend proper energy to find the meaning, sometimes there is no deeper meaning. There are times and areas that lack meaning and are just as they appear. Successful Torah study defines which areas are full of meaning, which are no more than they appear. At the start of this week's Torah portion, Noah is told to build an ark. And God warns Noah, for in seven days time, I will make it rain upon the earth, 40 days and 40 nights, and I will blot out from the earth all existence that I created. As we read the number 40, we automatically think of the 40 days Moshe spent at Har Sinai when he received the Torah. The Torah student must ask, if the number 40 is a coincidence, or is there a connection between the 40 days of the rain of the flood and the 40 days Moshe spent at Har Sinai receiving the Torah? It is commentary on this verse, Cheskun, argue that the connection between the 40 days of the flood and the 40 days of Harsinai is real. He wrote, the number of days is reminiscent of the 40 days during which Moshe received the Torah from God while on Harsinai. Cheskuri didn't explain the nature of the connection. What is the connection between the 40 days of the flood and the 40 days on Harsinai? Hashem described Moshe on Harsinai. The Lord said to Moshe, write down these commandments, for in accordance with these commandments, I make a covenant with you and with the Jewish people. He was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He ate no bread and drank no water, and he wrote down on the tablets the terms of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. The Ramban explained this verse, stated that Moshe was on top of the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, and while there, he wrote the tablets. In the opinion of the rabbis, the Ramban says, the meaning of the verse is that Moshe was there with God for 40 days and 40 nights, during which time he wrote on the tablets the word of this second covenant. But Moshe stayed there for another 40 days. Prior to these, to pray for all his requests, as is narrated in the Torah. You said to me, bring up this people. So I fell down before the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights, because the Lord had said he would destroy you. From this, we learn that the 40-day period of prayer preceded it. We generally assume there was only one 40-day period Moshe stood on Harsinai, but there were actual multiple 40-day periods which Moshe was on Harsinai. One of those 40-day sessions wasn't Moshe receiving a Torah, but rather praying for the Jewish people's survival. God wanted to destroy the Jewish people and leave Moshe to start a new chosen nation, much as God destroyed the generation of the flood and left Noah to rebuild the world. Moshe spent 40 days praying for God to spare the Jewish people. We don't find a record of Noah praying to God to spare the people of his generation. I'm not sure if Noah was to blame for not praying for his generation or if he knew they were beyond salvation. But the common denominator between the 40 days of the flood and the 40 days of Har Sinai was God's plan to destroy sinners and the 40 days were spent in destruction or salvation. The 40 days of flood and the 40 days of Har Sinai leaves us with an unforgettable lesson. Time can act as a vehicle for destruction or salvation. It all depends on how it is spent. Noah spent 40 days taking care of the people and animals on his ark, but his generation was wiped out. Moshe spent 40 days, his 40 day multiple sessions, receiving the Torah and praying for the Jewish people, saving them. Our choices of how we use our time might not be as consequential as Moshe and Noah's time, but they have the same capacity for destruction or salvation. It's up to us. Should I show